Hey everyone, welcome back to another video. Today I have something sort of special for you guys. I'm going to be giving you guys sort of a beginner's guide overview of the graphics editing program that a lot of people watch tutorials of on my channel, Paint.net. So Paint.net, if you guys don't know, is a free graphics image editing uh, program. It's sort of similar to GIMP. It's like Photoshop. It's sort of it's a Photoshop type program, except of course it is much less robust than Photoshop, and uh, it's sort of like Pixel. You know, all those free programs where you can make images with and, and uh, edit images, add graphics, make text and stuff. That is what Paint.net is. I'm pretty sure you already know what that is. So this video is going to be to help all the beginners out there for Paint.net since I already have a lot of Paint.net tutorials out on my channel. If, you, if you're if you watching them and you're sort of confused, uh, you can watch this video and I will try to help you. And this this may be a series uh, if you guys want it to be a series. So if you guys want, to do, me, want me to do multiple videos of this, just tell me in the comments and also tell me which parts of Paint.net you want me to cover. So when you first open Paint.net, this is what you are greeted with. You are greeted with... Uh, it may look a bit confusing, but I will try to make you more familiar with what exactly is on your screen. So, uh, this is what most programs uh, on Windows have. They have like file, edit, view stuff. Almost every program has this. So, file is basically options uh, to open existing files to save the file that you're, you're working right now. You know, you can open a new one, open recent ones. It is open recent. Acquire, which you can acquire pictures from scanners or cameras there. Close it, save, and print. That's really it. And that's how to exit. So. Edit is also what you will be using a lot, but you can re you really need to use your keyboard for this just to make your workflow easier. But you can undo stuff, redo stuff, cut, copy, and all this stuff, as you can see, they give you the keyboard shortcuts, which is really useful. So I really recommend if you don't know the keyboard shortcuts by hand, you can use this edit window. But you should really memorize how to use this because then they're pretty simple anyways. View is basically just to zoom in, zoom out, but uh, an easier way to zoom in is to just use your mouse scroller and scroll up and down. That's how to pan around. Or if you hold control on your keyboard and use your mouse, you can zoom in and out like that. It's really easy. And if you want to move your picture around, you just hold the click mouse scroll button. You just you, Instead of scrolling, you click it and you hold it and then you can drag the whole thing around. You have to do that because if you use your left click, you, you're going to use the tool you have. And I just pressed undo by doing control Z. You can add rulers if you want to. And uh, that's what the view is. I'm not, I'm not going to do that. So next we have the image tab. So basically what this does is it can uh, really affect the whole uh, image or the whole project or the canvas. So if you're wondering what the white square is, you, you know that basically whatever you do, this is what your image will be. So if you want to change the size of your canvas, you have to go to uh, canvas size. So... Uh, the width is of course the width how many pixels th your canvas is and the height is how many pixels high your canvas is So if you want to make thumbnails on YouTube, it has to be a 16 by 9 ratio So what I recommend is 720p So if you, you've probably heard that term before you probably already know what it is It's basically a pixel ratio. So it is 1280 pixels or 1280 by 720 pixels That's why it's called 720p because 720 pixels it is 16 by 9 because uh, that's the same ratio as 16 by 9, 12, 8 by 720. That is called 720p and it's the same for videos. You press OK as you can see, our whole canvas changes to a sort of more rectangle. This is the size that most thumbnails or all thumbnails on YouTube require. If you go back to canvas size, you can even make it 1920 by 1080, the height 1920, or the width 1920, make the height 1080. That is called 1080p, which is a bigger, but also the same size. It's the same ratio as before. If I go, if I undo, it's the same shape. It's just bigger. 1920 by 1080 is because there are more pixels. And if you want to make something in paint that you want to print on like a, like a printer, paper the printer paper the width is 8.5 inches so you can you can actually do physical inches on here and centimeters you can do inches and centimeters so if you want to print if you want to make graphic for like an actual piece of paper a piece of printer paper you would have to do make the width 8.5 and the height is 11 inches because that's how that's the dimensions of printer paper 8.5 inches by 11 inches if you press ok now as you can see our canvas is the same shape and not it's the same shape yes as a normal piece of paper so that is the image you can also do you can flip images so if i if i go i'll show you the tools later but if i do the paintbrush tool and make a c if i go to image flip horizontal it'll flip uh i think everything it'll flip everything horizontally i can flip it vertically too and i can rotate it the oh yeah by the way image uh this rotates the whole canvas if i rotate counterclockwise i can make it back rotate 180 makes it upside down 
and flatten just flattens all your layers uh, but I will show you that in a different video because layers is pro something that's a little more, bit more confusing. If you're wondering what the difference between canvas size and resize, if, if I do canvas size here, I can change it back to 1280 by 720. If I press OK, as you can see, it sort of keeps what the image that you have is in place and the same shape. As you can see, the C is right where it would be. If I, if I undo everything by doing Control-C, it's back to where it was and the C stays where it is. If I go to Image Resize, and if I, if I uncheck Maintain Aspect Ratio, if I change it back to 1280 by 720, as you can see, instead of keeping the C the same shape as it was, it distorts the C so it moves the whole image and keeps it inside the frame. So that's what resize does compared to canvas size. But again, if I do maintain maintain aspect ratio with resize, it will make everything ten uh, it will make everything the same aspect ratio. So if I try to make it 1920 by 1080, as you can see, it automatically changes the height to 1080 because it's maintaining the original aspect ratio that it was before. Hopefully that's not too confusing, but if you have more questions, feel free to leave it in the comments below. But for now, that is the image tab. And in layers, um, you don't really have to use this because all the all these are also down here on the layers panel. And I'll show you what the windows are, uh, these four windows here later on. Adjustments is uh, you won't have as many as mine if you don't have installed plugins. So I already have a video on how to install plugins. Plugins are just extra effects or adjustments you can add to paint.net uh, and, and they don't have to be effects or adjustments. They can be anything else. Uh, just It's an extra add-on to paint.net that you have to download from their official website um, to make things all easier for you. It gives you more tools and such and such. So uh, if you want to install plugins and make your uh, paint.net life easier, you can watch a video I have on that. So this is adjustment. You can adjust a lot of things uh, to the picture, like the colors, the brightness, uh, the saturation, the hue and saturation, levels, and you can add sepia and the transparency. There's all these adjustments that are really useful and you will be using this a lot. Finally, the last tab here is effects. Now effects is, of course, again, you won't have as many as I have if you just if you are new to Paint.net, if you didn't install plugins, a lot of these like object are mostly, I've installed them from extra add-ons and effects add-ons. So you, all these effects are what you will do to your pictures. This is the, probably the window that you'll be using most often if you're, you know, doing thumbnails and, and GFX and stuff like that. So now uh, these underneath all those uh, windows or whatever you call these, uh, tabs uh you have the individual buttons that are make things easier you can do new this open a new one open save print and you have cut copy paste and such you can also do crop selection so that means if you use a rectangle select tool and you and you collect something if you do crop to selection it will move make the whole can it will make this whole white canvas just that selection oh i accidentally there we go and press control you don't do that and if you have a rectangle selected if you don't want it selected anymore, or maybe you made your selection wrong or something, you can press the deselect button and it will deselect any re rectangle selection you have, or if you have the lasso select, you press deselect to do that. Undo, redo, pretty simple. This is a pixel grid, so if you zoom in, it does individual pixels, you can see, which is pretty useful, actually. Uh, and, and if you take it off, you don't have it. And you have the rulers. Before I end the video, let me just quickly show you what the, the windows are. Uh, again, we, this is the tools window. This is the layers window. So basically, if you add multiple layers, whatever you do on one layer won't affect what's on the top layer. And if you have a layer on top of another, it will make everything on top. So if I, if I make the background layer all green and I make the second layer, if I, t you know, draw something or whatever if i do if i control a to select everything uh and i do move select the pixel if i have the second layer that's on top selected instead of you know moving everything it will just move what is on the second layer same if i deselect if i choose the background layer and if i do control you select everything it will only move the green background layer and it won't move the blue one because it is on a separate layer this is really, really useful and basically a necessity. You need to work on different layers because you don't want, uh, if I put, if, let me just delete these layers by pressing the X here. If you make everything on one layer, like if you draw something or let me make it red and you made a mistake, uh, you, you basically would have, it's really hard to edit it because it's on the same layer. So they're all merged together. As you can see, it's all in one layer. So it's all one picture. So that's the layers tab. Uh, now we have the history tab, which basically keeps track of everything that you did. Literally everything, not just tools, not just effects, everything that you did, even opening and copy pasting an image, it keeps track of everything you did. Even, as you can see, I have like a bunch of paint, finished paint buckets, even keeps track of whenever I deselect something, which is really cool. It's really detailed and uh, it's really actually really useful if I 
of wanted to go back to something that I did. I don't want to keep pressing control to get my keyboard, which is really, really cool. And finally, we have the colors tab. So uh, in another video, we will be using the colors tab a lot more because in the second episode, I will be showing you all the tools here. So, you know, stay tuned for that if you want to. The second episode will be going to detail with all the tools. But uh, for now, this is the colors window. Uh, basically, the top left corner of this top left box, as you can see, it's black. This is your main color. This is your primary color. And if you use the color wheel here, you can choose any color in the color spectrum. And this changes the primary color because you click on it. As you can see, this is the drop them and so you can switch from primary which is the top left on this square or secondary which is this square right here and you can make it more, also any other color too so the the difference between the primary and secondary color the primary color is the color that will be chosen for every tool that is only using one solid color so for example the paintbrush tool it is of course it is a paintbrush like you can draw and use the brush with and change the pixels uh, i'll show you all the tools again in the later in the, in the second video the paintbrush is the paintbrush's color will be determined by the primary color so the primary color is like a red it'll be red the secondary color has no factor in it it will just be the primary color so if you're wondering what the secondary color is used for then it is basically uh it's used for tools that use two colors so the gradient is a tool that ramps one color to a second color so as you can see if i show you here if i drag my mouse the gradient it uses the secondary the blue secondary color will be the the color on the bottom or the color that where your mouse is and the primary color is the red one up here so if you're using a tool that uses two colors the gradient like is the gradient is, is an example the secondary color is useful so if i change the secondary color to yellow i can have like an orange to or red to yellow gradient if i make if i change the first color i can move make change the top one so yeah, that is what the secondary color is used for. You can also, you know, you have a bunch of preset colors down here. And if you click more, you can add a lot more options to your colors. You can make it, you know, a different hue. You can change the RGB to make it more green, more blue, more red. You can change the hue of it. You can change the saturation. So if it's black or more colored and the, like the brightness and stuff. You can also change the opacity of the color. So if you don't want any color, you can bring it all the way down or bring it up. So that is the colors tab. So I uh, hope you guys enjoyed this. If you guys want me to make this a series, definitely leave it in the comments below. I really, uh, I really, I use this program every day for my thumbnails and my banners and such. So I kind of know, sort of know what I'm doing after like three years of using it. So if you're a beginner, uh, tell me if it helped you out. Tell me if it didn't help you out. If you want me to cover more things uh, in paint.net, like anything else in the, in the program that's sort of confusing to you, leave it in the comments below. And if it's detailed enough, I might make it into a video of this, I guess, a new series. So thank you guys so much for watching and uh, hope you all enjoyed it. Peace out.